if you're playing the beta, good luck, have fun, and remember, none of this really matters because everything's going to get reset. Hey, I'm Super Senpai, and today we're going to be talking about Pokemon Unite, and I'm actually one of the beta testers, so I'm excited to talk about what the game has in store for you guys. Now, there is no new footage in this video, so people from the Pokemon company, people from Tencent, there's an FRI, we're not using new footage from the game, we're just going to show a 10 minute guide of how to become pro in Pokemon Unite. Hopefully you guys are happy with that, and don't ban me for making this video, so let's get this started. Now, if you don't know what Pokemon Unite is, it's basically Pokemon and Mobile Legends had a baby in China, and it's only available in Canada which is like the first time ever Canadians get something first before Americans. And if you're worried about the people who are doing the beta tests or getting ahead of you, don't worry, everything is white completely. So when it's released nationally on Switch and on mobile devices, everyone's in the same spot. Hopefully this video will give you the same head start those people have, except you didn't have to play the game and lose all your progress in the process. And if you are playing the game, well, this will help you out too if you aren't, if you suck. I actually have never played a mobile game before, even League of Legends, which when I first started playing this game, I'm like, Jesus, this game sucks. <laughs> but that's probably because I kept losing a lot. Once my friend Riza taught me how to play the game, it was actually a lot of fun for like two hours. Then it's just the same game over and over again. Especially that who plays Pikachu. Every who plays Pikachu, you. But overall, the game is pretty cute. It's pretty simple to play. And if you don't have teammates is actually a pretty fun game so for those who are playing the game and those people who are getting ready to play Pokemon Unite this is gonna be a crash course to become a pro player in 10 minutes or less how to play Pokemon Unite up front the footage they showed us earlier is actually a lot different than what the gameplay looks like now but it's the same mechanic so your goal is to destroy as many towers as possible the towers don't protect themselves like most mobile games so you guys use your body to protect it your goal is to kill and sacrifice balls to towers and repeat that's about it. But don't die often or die at all because your opponent gains momentum when they get your experience points from killing you. I would say defend your towers, but every game I play online, no one defends their towers. So it's like, everyone go offense. Now let's talk about the Pokemon. There's multiple different Pokemons and the elemental typing does not matter for Pokemon. Yes, I know, water beats fire and fire beats grass. This does not affect this game at all. And people online still think it do. Like, come on, this level 10 Charizard is not going to die from a level 5 Squirtle. I also know there's a lot of different ways to describe these Pokemon, but I'm going to describe them in four types that make the most sense to me. There's range, brute, tank, and support. If you're range, you're a little you like to snipe people from the outside and run away as fast as you can. If you're a brute, you like to chase little Pokemon and beat them so you can be a big boy. If you're a tank, you let everyone hit you and then you hit them when they're tired. And support, you can build walls, you can heal people, you can bring up stats. I don't know much because I tried playing support and everyone died so I don't think I'm good support. And each Pokemon can learn two moves and these two moves can be upgraded and you have choices up to four different choices of which moves you want your final Pokemon to have. For example, Garchomp, you can learn Earthquake or Dragon Rush. Earthquake slows down everyone, and Dragon Rush always misses for me. So, you know, pick Earthquake if you're playing Garchomp. The weirdest part is, even though I categorize some Pokemon support, they can actually fall to other categories like offensive. It just depends how you want to build your Pokemon. And it's important for you to check the ailment of what your moves do, because some of the moves can actually bounce Pokemon around, some people can make Pokemon sleep, some Pokemon make slow down. Also, there's a Unite move, which you do a big boom attack, and then... But then when everyone realizes you're done attacking, they're all going to kill you. So, you know, you got to run away in those three seconds of invincibility. Currently in beta test here, the melee Pokemon. Brute is Garchomp and Lucario. Range is Cinderace and Pikachu. If you're a little b you play Pikachu. Tank is Snorlax and Crustle. Which, by the way, if you play Crustle, you are my best friend every time I see you. And I will send you a friend invite. He just builds walls. So that's why it's hilarious. You can trap people in the walls and start beating up them. So, you know, Crustle, you're always the best Pokemon trainer. And support, which is Mr. Mime. And Eldegoss technically, but I've seen Ninetales used as support more often, so it's kind of confusing because Ninetales is kind of offensive and support at the same time. So, you know, you, you pick how you want to build your Pokemon, you could be a support anytime you want. Quick note, there are three types of currency in this game. There are coins, there are tickets, and there are gems. I would recommend not using the coins to unlock the Pokemon. In the current beta, gems are easier to get than coins because coins, you should use them for items. Gems are just easier to unlock Pokemon, but pick Pokemon you really want to play. Speaking about items, items are the most important part of this game because they make your Pokemon individually based on your preferences. Also, it's just a competitive advantage which is not fair, which I wish I knew when I started playing this game. If I knew that, I wouldn't be stuck in beginner cup for like 
three days. You need to be level 14 to unlock all three held item slots, but you can unlock them progressively over time. These items help you build your Pokemon the way you want, and they have secondary effects. If you score a goal on a tower, then you can get a boost in attack, for example, or you can recover health when you damage an opponent or support your teammates, but I've never seen it that effective in the beta currently. Maybe in the future it'd be better. But the bigger important part of the items is they actually increase stats like health, like speed, attack, special attack, recovery. Those are more important to me. So check those stats out and pick which item you want to build a base on that. I find the most important items for a beginner player is float stone, muscle band, and leftovers because they increase your speed, increase your attack, they increase your basic attack moves, and they give you health and they recover health over time. However, I also found experience share gives you health and extra speed. Which is weird, but go with what you like. Each health item costs a thousand coins. You can level them up to level 30 at the current state. You need to buy item enhancers, which cost coins, which is why I told you to save them earlier, because they help you increase your item's ability so you can increase your attack even more or your speed more or, you know, extra, everything just gets upgraded. So use the item enhancements for Pokemon items that you want to use that you feel comfortable playing with those Pokemon. Because everyone is Garchomp and I play Garchomp, so it's like Neo Plan B. Sometimes I need plastic because people play Laquario after, so I, yeah, I have to play Cramorant. I love him, by the way, but still, it's just, it's Cramorant. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right. Cramorant. His name is Uu in Japanese. In addition, there's battle items, which are not health items, which are passive. A battle items you can click on during the game at least once or twice per minute, and it allows you to get a boost of attack, speed, health, or running away faster. I personally use XP just because it allows me to run away faster or run after opponent faster. And then there's a green one that does not have any labels. I'm actually legit in the beta. They actually did not add any words to it. I think it's critical increase. Someone can correct me when the actual game comes up or the beta gets updated. Now you know the basic of how to play Pokemon Unite. But we're going to talk about how to become a pro. And if you play Mobile Legends or League of Legends, you are already better than 80% of the people I play with online. People still think that the Pokemon weaknesses actually apply to this game. It just does not. I know Garchomp is a ground type but it's not immune to Pikachu. Stop getting hit by Pikachu like you're immune. So in the game map, there's a top, there's a middle, and a bottom. There's no tower in the middle, so you don't have to worry about that until the end game-ish, but top and bottom is pretty much the most valuable areas for the current game. Your goal is to grind on basic Pokemon all around the areas until you get to level four or five. And then you start ganging up on your opponents. If you see one Pokemon and your opponent running around, Get your friend Pokemon and go beat up that Pokemon. Then you start ganging up with your teammates on your opponents. So if you see one opponent, you hopefully get two on one, three on two, and sometimes four on one if you really are, you know, you just want one. Uh, but then you feel bad for your teammate you left on by themselves, which is have fun defending. You're faster in your area, but you're slower in their area. So don't spend too much time in your opponent's area. Just kill Pokemon around there so they can't really level up or kill them straight up, gang, gang up and kill them and then run back to your area to start healing yourself. Cause your tower so you can start healing yourself. You can teleport to your home tower to recover your health fast. Level difference. In my opinion, if your opponent's Pokemon is one level lower than yours or, or, or even if it's two, it's even better. You can kill your opponent's Pokemon right on the spot. But if you're the same level, try to make sure you're ganging up with your other Pokemon or stay around your base so you can keep hit constantly healing because they can't heal in your area. If they come too close to your area, they slow down because of the border friction. So the towers are locked on two layers of defense, layer one, layer two, and the home tower. The home tower is only unlocked if you destroy one of the towers from level one and one of the towers level two. Most people like to just destroy the two towers up front so your opponent has less areas to heal and it's hard for them to defend themselves and it's easier for you to run through. So it's nice for your early game to destroy their first two towers or first four towers if you're lucky. But there is actually some strategy to keeping some towers alive and I'll explain later in the video why. But being the wild Pokemon is very key because you get additional points, you boost up your own teammates and most importantly, if you kill Zapdos, Zapdos makes every single tower available for destruction. And that's very key because the last two minutes of the current beta game is game over for anyone who's not paying attention because your score is double. So that means every time you put your points into the system, your points are worth double points. 25 becomes 50, 50 becomes 100 points. And that destroys the tower automatically. And if two people go to the tower at the same time, then they can actually go up to 200 points in the tower. And one of the biggest strategies I noticed in the game which you guys can use is basically saving up two of the towers on one side of the map so that you can actually double your score instantly far away from your opponent. 
because if you destroy all the towers, logically speaking, you you don't have one place to go and your opponents can defend that pretty easily. But if you have lingering towers here and there, it's hard for them to protect all of them at once. You destroy the tower, you get plus 200 points to that total. And that's insane because your opponent can't stop because of how far it is from the home base. So that's a really cool strategy you guys can do in the game. And that's why it's important for you to really consider how, which towers to destroy, when to destroy them, when to throw in those points. But also high risk because if you die in the two minutes, you have 30 seconds to respond back. Which means by the time you respond back, the game is probably over. So don't die <laughs> but you gotta go for the points so it's a really tough decision which makes the game so exciting in the last two minutes the first two minutes is kind of boring because you gotta grind on a little weak pokemon so the moral of the story of pokemon unite is if you die less you win more unless your opponent scores more points than you then that's the exception and of course the items because you know picking the right items help you play the game the way you want and collaborating with people makes the game more fun because the whole game it's not about individual stats because I've killed 15 people in one game and we still lost because the team doesn't work together to try to get more points because the end of the game the goal of the game is to get more points and you need to get more points by making sure you don't die and if you want if you don't want to die you need to level up stronger faster so you get kill other people so they don't have the advantage to level up as fast as you so you can score more points. And that's how you become a pro player in Pokemon Unite. Let's recap. 1. Know your playstyle of Pokemon if you're Brute, Range, Tank, or Support. Number 2. Know which items make you feel more comfortable playing the game. Number 3. Level up fast, die less, and get more points. That's how you play Pokemon Unite. And that's about it. If you're playing the beta, good luck, have fun, and remember, None of this really matters because everything's going to get reset. And if you are getting ready to play Pokemon Unite, get ready. It's actually a really fun game to play with friends because, again, it's very simple. Everyone can get into it. Everyone loves Pokemon. If you want a game to hang out with your friends, this is probably a good choice. And I hope this video stays accurate because I'm pretty sure the beta is not going to look like the final product. So, if I'm completely wrong, I'm sorry. If you like this video, remember to watch us on YouTube at Super Senpai because we love talking about Nintendo stuff, gaming stuff, random stuff. I'm actually quite excited for Pokemon Snap, so stay tuned for that one at Monster Hunter and Mario Golf. Even though I never talk about golf, I actually like golf games. I'll see you guys next time. Also, Pikachu is a little Pokemon Unite. First of all, he hits you far away so you don't even notice it and does a lot of damage. Then he has the audacity to slow you down so you can't chase up to him. So when you think he's gone, he comes back and slaps you one more time. If you play Pikachu as a main, you are a simp.